Mercedes-Benz has built plenty of momentum in recent years with its AMG performance models. Hugely powerful, fast and brutal. Now Mercedes is taking the brand to the next level with its AMG GT. First things first though, and the GT absolutely nails the look. It's got that big long bonnet, a really hunkered down stance, but it doesn't have the gull wing doors. Things that were synonymous with some Merck sports cars, instead just standard openings. The two seat sports car is the spiritual successor to the gull wing, but it comes with bigger targets cracking into the sports car market dominated by the likes of the Porsche 911. Beneath the skin too, there's some serious pedigree. The aluminium space frame first saw service in the SLS Gullwing. But there's a new engine, a 4 litre twin turbo V8, good for a stonking 375 kilowatts and 650 newton metres. Plus it's got some tricky technology like the electronic engine mounts that can instantly stiffen or soften how the engine's held in place. In its softer setting, it allows more compliance and works with the adjustable dampers to improve the ride. But firmed up, they send more jolts into the low slung cabin, but reduce twisting and movement of the drivetrain for sharper, more settled high speed cornering. This is a car that's more about how it goes about its business, so let's not muck around. And listen to that. That is, without doubt, one of the best sounds in a modern car. It's phenomenal. It's got all the right V8 noises, cracks, pops, and plenty of bass. The amount of work AMG put into making sure this engine sounds like that is phenomenal. They've got laser cut exhaust components, flaps to divert the air where it needs to go at certain times. And there's even uh, a system that joins up the left side of the exhaust and the right side of the exhaust so that it basically equalizes the pressure. But it's an engine that loves a rev too. That's 5,000 and then it goes up to almost 7,000 revs. And this is one of the biggest challenges for a car like this. I'm at Laguna Seca which is one of America's most iconic tracks. You can't actually see the second corner of the corkscrew because of the length of the bonnet on this car. But the GT isn't just about getting up to speed quickly, something it does very, very well. It's also extremely sharp through the bend, so the steering is really sharp. You've got to take a little bit of time to get used to it. But once you do, it directs the car brilliantly. Almost a perfect weight balance, 47% of the weight over the front wheels, the other 53 over the rear. So when you're challenging it through some of those faster bends, it sits really well. But still has those rear drive tendencies, so the rear end wanting to step out, it's certainly got enough power to do that. The response is certainly something it has in spades. But the GT is more than just hot laps on the track. Uh, Merck basically acknowledges that this car could be a daily driver for a lot of people, so it's important that it's comfortable to drive. And the seating position is really good. The, uh, the seats are quite comfortable, a fair bit of support, and the controls are just as logical as any other Merck. And it's surprisingly comfortable on regular roads. It can get a little bit harsh over the sharper bumps, sort of thunder into them, but um, generally, it's pretty good. And the V8 works brilliantly on the road where you've got instant torque, instant grunt, never get bored of that sound. All that response, one of the things Merck did with this engine was put the turbos inside the V and they say that gives you a lot better throttle response. So instead of the turbo lag, hit the accelerator and it's action straight away. It adds up to a car that is surprisingly multi-talented. It's extremely quick on a track, um, phenomenal engine, really agile and it carries over a lot of those traits to the road, but at the same time, it can be practical and, uh, and quiet and refined. It's, um, it's pretty impressive, but it needs to be. It's got a king well and truly in its sights, the Porsche 911. Now, I'm not quite sure whether it's there. It's certainly very close, and it's uh, by far the most serious contender yet to, to what is an absolute icon of the road. 